You can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. Oh, yeah. We want to shine our light for Jesus. We want everyone to know the love of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we love to sing about our Jesus because of his great love for us. Oh, we thank you, Lord. But you can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. You can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. You can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. There's a little light in all of us by God's design. You can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. Let's sing that again. You can't be a beacon if your light God, if your light don't shine, there's a little light in all of us by God's design. And you can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. Here we go, we're going up. And you can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. You can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. There's a little light in all of us by God's design. And you can't be a beacon if your light Play that for us, guys. Shine, let it shine. 
Good morning, cowboys and cowgirls. How many of y'all glad where you are this morning? Amen. Well, we welcome you, and uh, I thought we'd have a lot bigger crowd than this starting off with covered dish today. How many of y'all just came to eat? Some of us are honest, okay? Well, they, they, got, a, they got a good meal going in there, so it's going to be good today. But we welcome you, and we're glad you're here. And I think probably it'll fill up a little more before we before we get going too far. But anyway, we want to welcome those that are in their living room watching on the stream. And uh, we were glad that you're out there. And you, if you don't come in soon, you, you're going to miss a, a good meal today. So it's covered dish day, and uh, anytime you all feel like coming, we'd sure welcome you. So we got plenty of room for distancing right, and, and uh, we just we just... Looking for God to bless us today. Amen. He's going to pour his spirit out on us. And it's going to be great worship. It's going to be great fellowship. And we're going to have some body ministry after a while. And uh, so it's going to be a good day. So I'm glad you're here and I'm glad I'm here. Amen. Amen. So let's pray and ask God to, to just pour himself out on us today. Father, we just thank you for a beautiful day outside. We thank you for a beautiful day inside, Father, and we thank you for the crowd that's here. And Lord, we just ask you today to, to, to pour your Spirit out on us. We know your, your Spirit's in us, and we know that you, you fill us with your Spirit, but you inhabit our praises too, Father. So we want to see you inside and outside, and we just want this to be your day. We want to worship you and praise you and let you know how much we love and adore and, and worship you. So, Father, just, uh, just bless us today. Let us know when we leave this place that we've been in your presence and that you've moved in our midst, Father. So we thank you for this church. We thank you for, for everything you do for us, Father. And we just bless you. So just bless this day for us, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God is good all the time. And all the time. God is good all the time, puts a song of praise in his heart of mine. God is good all the time, through the darkest night, his light will shine. God is good, God is good. If you're walking through the valley and there's shadows all around, do not fear, he will guide you, he will keep you safe and sound, for he has promised to never leave you, nor forsake you. And his word is true, God is good all the time, puts a song of praise in his heart of mine. God is good all the time, through the darkest night, his light will shine. God is good, God is good. We are sinners, so unworthy, and for us He chose to die. Filled us with His Holy Spirit, now we can testify that 
his love is everlasting and his mercy may never end God is good all the time puts a song of praise in his heart of mine God is good all the time through the darkest night his light will shine God is good God is good all the time there boys
perfect in all of your ways and you are perfect in all of your ways and you are perfect in all of your ways to us you are perfect Lord and you are perfect in the Lord with us this morning, just bringing everything you have to him. We can hear you up here. Well, those of you here in the sanctuary, we can hear. Those of you online, we can't hear you so much, but you can always type in there and let I us know. I don't know. I think I heard a couple of Did them. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, howdy, y'all here in the sanctuary. Hello, hello. Wave to your Wave to your sisters. neighbor there. Hello, everybody. Hello. Good to see y'all. Got some familiar faces there. Got any first timers here today? First timers here today? All right, all right. Well, anybody first time online? Be sure and type in there and say I'm a first timer. And those of you who'd like to tune in with us, be sure and type in there and let us know where you're tuning in from. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, CFJ family here in the sanctuary, we would still like for you to only connect to our Wi Fi for your Bible apps and not to share the Facebook broadcast that we're having right now. We're doing better, it's getting better. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right. Clearly, it is fall. Amen. <laughs> wow. Look at all these wow. beautiful Look decorations. At the decorations. Amen. My goodness. Is this, is this the workings of the denim and lace ladies? Yes. How about y'all stand up and we just want to say thank you for beautifying the place. All Hallelujah. right. Praise the Lord. Wow. Give yourselves a hand, too. I don't know how many. We come in here real early to practice, and how many people came in and said, wow. <laughs> wow, so that's wonderful, and I just, it looks beautiful, hallelujah. Well, it's time for announcements. All right, let's hear, the, this is the first announcement. Let's just read this one. Oh, it's a little hard to read. Can you see what that is? That's a re sales receipt. It says, salvation, sin, paid, 
Shame, paid. Regret, paid. Past mistakes, paid. Unforgiveness, paid. Hurt, paid. Anger, paid. Debt, paid. Change, there's no change. Subtotal, grand total, zero, zero. For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 6, 23. Jesus and Jesus paid, paid it, all. it all. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. <laughs> now that's a good announcement, don't you think? <laughs> that's right. Oh, hallelujah. All right, it's October. Time to celebrate October birthdays. Uh -huh. Are you in the sanctuary? Is your birthday coming up, Roger? <laughs> Y'all, Barb? Yeah. Yes. Who's that? Who is that? Ed has a birthday also on the 8th. Well, he'll need to put some information down and let us know so we can update the slides for next year. But if your birthday isn't up there right now, be sure and put your information in so we can get it updated. But you know what we get to do? We get to sing. We huh? get to sing happy birthday. How about a C? There it is. C. All right, we're going to sing happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. God bless y'all. Happy birthday to you. Okay, ready? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you all, happy birthday to you. Let's see those names again, <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, all right, so if you have a birthday, uh, be sure and bring cupcakes, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, the next slide, please. How many came to the campfire service on Wednesday night? Woo, was that fun? Yeah. We hadn't got to do one outside before. We had, to, we had a fire or a smoke pit or whatever it was. It was a... S'mores pit. Oh, we had a campfire. There you go. <laughs> That's what it was. We had a campfire. We had s'mores galore, thanks to Miss Elizabeth. We had testimonies giving glory to God. Thank you, Sherry, and thank you, Brenda. We had a beautiful orange moon full moon yeah. and we had worship around the campfire it was wonderful it you couldn't beat it that's right it was wonderful hallelujah well we didn't um that that one will go again every fifth wednesday but any sermon that is preached in this sanctuary is recorded and then dubbed over onto a cd and if you've got to hear that sermon again no matter who preached it um, Dee will have CDs out in the foyer and just give her a couple days and then she'll get them out there and they're all labeled with who preached it, what the date, what the title was and, um, and there's a donation box if you'd like to make a donation and so those sermons are always available if you want to uh, have them in a, on a CD format or you can go to the website and listen to them again. That's right. So for you that don't have Facebook that's listening online, uh, if you're listening online or here in the sanctuary, you can listen to this on www.cowboysforjesus.com. Usually up by Monday afternoon. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, that way you can watch it or you can listen. All right, next slide. Operation Christmas Child, October items. We, we heard a presentation last week from Carolyn about how wonderful you all have done about just donating and giving to this ministry. And so now we have about 350 boxes, which is awesome. We get to pay for the shipping for that too. Which is awesome. <laughs> she said uh, it's about $3,200, and we already had about 2200 So we need just a little less than $1,000. So pray about that and ask the Lord if you're, um, how he wants you to help donate towards that. And just write on your thing, on your check, or on the envelope that is for postage for the um, um, Operation Christmas Child. Hallelujah. All right. Our CFJ ministries are resuming in October. Today, today, right after the service monthly covered dish so be sure and attend that it's uh i know tammy and her crew have been cooking up a storm yes they so have. everyone is welcome so please stay and eat and this is our first one in in months and months and months so be sure and come and, and everyone is welcome to come so if you didn't know what was going on today please stay and join us and we're so thankful that uh you know uh, we're allowed we're starting to open up all the services here in the church so praise god for that hallelujah so y'all come y'all come all right next saturday morning in the, in the, um, four, not the foyer, in the fellowship, fellowship hall. hall, in the dining hall, the men will be cooking up a storm. And it'll be men's breakfast. It's at 8.30 on Saturday morning. It's always the second Saturday. They're always, and they have praise and worship. They always have testimonies, food and fellowship and fun. And so, men, be sure and come to that. It is next Saturday. 
All right, it's time to order your Cowboy for Jesus jean jackets. There's three jackets out in the foyer, so you can take a look at them. There's three different sizes, so you can see what size you want. Small, medium, and large, and, and extra large is 77. Double XL is 79, and triple XL is 80. Yeah. So we'd like for you to get your order turned in so we can get them done as quickly as possible. And we need three more to complete the order. So if y'all are on the fence, be sure and jump on in. <laughs> All right, let's see the next slide. Can you read that? That's a man in a hotel saying, hello, I would like a wake-up call, please. And then the lady in the front desk. Oh, of course, sir, for the wages of sin are death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Again, Romans 6 and 23. That's a wake-up call. Amen. That's a wake-up call. Amen. And remember, today is a good day to pray for our president as he has as, as contacted COVID, and him and his wife, the First Lady. So be sure and keep them on your heart and in your prayers. And the staff. And also, you want to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It's Peace of Jerusalem Day today. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So pray for our nation. Pray for our leaders. Um, pray for um, our whole nation. However, the Holy Spirit would just prompt you. Even if we didn't mention it, you still can pray about it. And God would ask you to pray about it. whatever he puts in your heart. You, you lift that up. All right. Hey, CFJ family. Yes. What time is it? Cheerful giving time. It is, but it's also the final day to get registered to vote. <laughs> so if you haven't registered, be sure and do so. Amen. All right. And All right. it is. It's cheerful giving time. So if the ushers would come forward. It is quite an honor to know that you've partnered with the Lord and he gives you what he wants you to have. And he just asks you to give me 10% of that back. Give me the first 10%, and I'll bless your 90. You. And what an honor and a privilege and a great joy it is to get to come into the house of the Lord and bring our worship. But another way of worship is giving our tithes to him. They're his tithes. They're his tithes. We're bringing our offerings also. And so bring your tithes and bring his, or bring his tithes and bring your offerings on up to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And I'll go ahead and pray over our offering. Heavenly Father, we cheerfully, cheerfully we bring you our tithes of what you have given us and offerings that we give to you. Father, we pray for kingdom returns, souls saved, bodies healed, Lord, marriages restored, and the gospel message to go forth into this community and all over the world. Thank you for these uh, tithes and offerings. Bless the gift and bless the giver. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, as we enter into our time of worship, let's have that next slide there. Thank you. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him, his presence, with singing, Psalm 100.2. How many of you sing throughout the day? Sing his praises. I mean, not just any old song, but you're just singing to the Lord. I was talking to Sherry three different times this morning in the sanctuary. It's just she and I in here. She didn't hear me one time. She was singing to the Lord. <laughs> I want you to not even hear us today. I want you to hear the Lord. And so as we sing these songs, I want you to sing these words like you're singing them to his heart. Or that he is singing them to your heart. And listen and let him speak something to you. It may just be for you. But it may just be for the rest of us too. And so we're going to have a time in these songs for you to uh, share those words with us. And so that you can minister to us and the Lord can minister through you. And so um, let us just enter into a time of, of worship and, and let's listen for the Lord. And when you have a word, the pastor will. Um, let me move this over here so you can reach it. Pastor Jerry will meet you up here. And there's his microphone. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. We just open our hearts and our ears to listen for you as we, um, out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth will speak, but it will sing to you. And as we sing to you, Lord God, come and have it our praises. Hallelujah. Shackle my heavy burden Beneath the Lord of peace Head and shine And then the hand of Jesus Touched me And now I am no longer Oh, the joy and the plus my 
if you like and let's just sit and listen for him hallelujah and remember that first time that he touched you it's the kindness of God that brings people to repentance and it was his kindness that spoke to my heart and everyone needs compassion a kind heart we've begun to make a time for the body to minister Sometimes, how many of you got the, the email about asking God if he had anything for you to do today? Praise the Lord. So Sherry has a word, and, and we're going to let her give that. And then if some of the rest of you have a word, we'll get ready to give it, okay? Just be sure it's what God's saying. Well, he said it to me. <laughs> Last week, I was cleaning house, decluttering, and just cleaning and this happens so many times with me. That's when God speaks to me. But he speaks about the spiritual cleaning. It needs to take place. And I just started singing a song I haven't sang in years. Um, this title. I can't see my words either. Oh, there is healing in his wings. Do y'all know that one? 
There's healing in his wings. There's healings in his wings. The sun of righteousness shall rise. There's healing in his wings. And in my mind, I'm, I'm seeing these two big wings, you know, feathers, wings. And I'm thinking, how, how do I just get them to wrap around me? You know, I need it. I need God's healing in my body and my soul. And immediately I heard him say, Psalm 91. So I read, read um, I started in verse 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 4 comes the wings he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge and he's just saying in my presence in my presence that's your healing that that's everything you need in my presence and I just realized you no know, I need to I need to desperately seek his presence not just wait for it to fall or hit or bounce off somebody else. I need to be desperately seeking for his presence. And I looked up, oh, dwell. He who dwells, live in or at a specified place to remain for a time. Exist where the heart of the matter dwells. Abide to remain stable or fixed in a state continue in a place to conform by the rules amen amen that ladies and gentlemen is a word who's next if you have a word why don't you come on down front so it won't take so much time well, I feel like this is just a, a confirmation because all morning <clears throat> I've been hearing that the spirit of healing, supernatural healing, was in this place. And, and I just felt like the Lord was just going to be touching people. And then, and then the Lord said, not only in this place, but those people that are at home listening to this, that the Lord is supernaturally touching them with his supernatural healing. Amen. The Lord is showing me how important it is to be close to him before a crisis happens. And when a crisis happens or you're going through a hard time, it's just a little bump in the road in your journey with the Lord. It's not a setback, but it's a setup for future ministry. Amen. The Lord seems to be using the Psalms this morning to minister to some of us. And he showed me something while we were during the praise and worship. Um, and, and I know there's a few people in this congregation that they're experiencing the same thing that Clark and I are. And that's with one of our children. And actually two of them, but one in particular. And... You know, in Psalms it says that God is our refuge and our strength. And um, that's Psalms 46. And then down in verse 9 it says that he causes wars to cease. And he's just such an awesome God. The point I'm making is that sometimes with our children, they get off the path. But God has a way of bringing them back. And so right now one of ours is off of the path. And especially this one in particular. But he's starting to feel some peace. And I believe God is preparing him to bring him back to his putting his trust and faith in the Lord. And the enemy has a way of distorting the truth. And that's, that's what's happening with some of our kids right now. That have been in church or they've had an experience with the Lord. And I just am grateful to him that he even in psalms 103 it says he redeems us he redeems our life from destruction and when you get off the path you there can be some destruction but you know those of us that have committed our children to the lord we know that he's got his hand on them and we want to bless his holy name praise god amen
Here's a faithful man right here. Well, I guess what I have to say today, uh, <clears throat> I've been going through some times and lost my, well, I didn't lose her. I know where she's at. But anyway, I'm my English bulldog. She went to be with the Lord. I've had a lot of that going on. <laughs> But when the heart gets heavy, turn to the Lord. The devil's trying to tell me, you know, that's not it's not you. You're not you're not what you say you are, but I I believe I am. I know it. I asked God, I said, God, what do I do? He told me, keep my word in front of you at all time. <sighs> he said, are you thankful for Jesus? Say, man, I am. He said, then you know what to do. And right then, I got up, grabbed my Welch's grape juice, grabbed my crackers. We had communion. That did it. It all left, and I tell you, God is good all the time. Thank you. And don't listen to that devil if he says something bad about you, amen? Because we all know who you are. Anybody else? Well, I want to I want to correct a little thing I said when we first started to be sure it's try to be sure it's God, and and that's really not totally correct you know we, we're all learning we're all growing together and uh, we want it to be God but if you're not sure it's God you got two choices actually you got three choices if you're not sure it's God but you but you're hearing this voice you can come to one of us pastors and and tell us what you're hearing and we can help you discern sometimes whether it's God or not and uh, you can also just suck it up and come up and take a chance because as long as it's a good thing and if, you know if it happens not to be God it may be just something to encourage as long as it's encouraging on that side then it's okay to come up and try okay but uh, but the third choice is just to play like you didn't hear it and don't do anything and that's the worst choice of all amen so we want you to be comfortable and I didn't mean to put a damper on anybody we we want it to be the lord but we're willing to take a chance and we love you and there's nothing wrong with it with it not being an absolute word from god it can be a word of encouragement that touches a lot of people okay so anyway let's let's pray father in jesus name lord we ask you just to, to hide these words in our heart and uh lord i just ask you to, to minister to roger and, and build him up in his spirit and in his inner man and Lord, he's a faithful man, and I just bless him, and he blesses me. Every time I see his faithfulness, he just blesses me. And we just thank you for the day, Father. We thank you for what you're going to do in the rest of this service. And we just praise your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Then sings my soul, my Savior God. Oh, my Savior God.
Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't you uh, help me make welcome Pastor Jimmy Darnell. Well, the body ministry time is getting stronger and stronger. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. So we all want to come listening to the Holy Spirit, what He might say through us to the church. Praise God. Uh, before I begin to preach, let me just uh, say a little word about our men's breakfast Saturday morning. Uh, <clears throat> Brother Jimmy's going to be doing the cooking. He's got two assistants going to help him. So uh, it's going to be a good, it's going to be a good day. And uh, let me give you just a little keynote on the speaker. I've invited a speaker to come who, who's always inspired me with, with his testimony. He went to prison for seven years for dealing drugs. In prison, he got into the wrong crowd, was thrown into solitary, into the hole for a hundred days. And they said, you can take one book with you. He said, well, my mother gave me a Bible when I came to prison. I never opened it. I'll take the Bible. So he took the Bible with him down there into the hole. And he said, all I did for a hundred days was do push-ups and read the Bible. And he said, while I was in that hole, Jesus came to me. Utterly transformed his life. He became a leader when he got out in the prison church. He's a leader today, an awesome man of God. And uh, he told me one time, he said, Brother Jimmy, you know, sometimes life gets so busy. I almost want to say, Lord, take me back and put me back in the hole where it was just me and Jesus. Praise God. But you're, you're going to love to hear this story. So all you men, uh, be sure to be here Saturday morning for the good breakfast and for the testimony. Well, let's pray now. Let's pray for our nation. Let's pray for our president. Let's pray uh, as we preach the word of God. Father, we thank you and we bless you now. We're thankful, God, for what you're doing in Cowboys for Jesus Church. And Lord, we do pray for America today. Lord, we're probably in the greatest crisis since the time of the Civil War. And so we need your help in this hour. And so we cry out to you as the one who loves America, as the one that wants to use this nation as a city set on a hill, as the one that wants to send missionaries out of this nation all over the world. And so, God, we ask you to help us in this hour. Bless our president, his wife, and all those around them who became ill. May there be a rapid supernatural recovery from the disease. And may good come out of this, we pray. May good come out of it. And Lord, I ask today, now that you help me in the preaching of the Word of God, Help us, Lord, to have ears to hear, wills to do, but we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, help me preach today. You say, how do you do that? You all know, you know how to help me preach. Amen. Amen. That's right, Brother Jerry. They can, they can help us, can't they, Jerry? They can help us. Amen. So you, you help us as we preach today. I feel the preaching, teaching, anointing today. Very, very strong. So let's start in the first chapter of the book of Romans. Romans 1, beginning in verse 13. I want you to know, brethren, that I have often intended to come to you, but thus far have been prevented, in order that I may reap some harvest among you as well as among the rest of the Gentiles. For I am under obligation, or I am a debtor, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish. So I'm eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. Of course, we know the word gospel means good news. I'm eager to preach the good news to you also who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Now, in verse 16, we come to the theme of the book of Romans right here. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who has faith or to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed through faith for faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. 
And I'm sure as Paul was penning this letter to the Romans, or dictating it, whichever, when he came to that word, Rome, that I'm eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome, a little bit of intimidation probably struck his heart as he thought about Rome. Rome, the center of the known world. Rome, the city of government and gladiators. Rome, the city of power and pollution. Rome, the city of circuses and sin. And I'm sure he just felt a little bit intimidated. Do I really have anything to say to Rome? And then I'm sure the Holy Spirit began to bring to his, mem his memory what had happened in some of the places where he'd gone and preached the gospel. I'm sure he thought about Philippi when they didn't know where to go. And in the night, he saw the vision of a man saying, come over into Macedonia and help us. And immediately, they crossed over and began to preach the gospel for the first time on the European continent. Led a woman to the Lord at a ladies' prayer meeting by the river. And then ended up in jail. A revival power hit the jail. And before you know it, there's a powerful church raised up in the city of Philippi. I'm sure he thought about Corinth and how God led him to go into the city of Corinth. And he says, I went with fear and trembling because Corinth was such a wicked city. It was a seaport city. It was a city filled with pagan temples. Every night, a thousand prostitutes would come out of those temples and flood the streets of, of Corinth selling their bodies. And yet, even in fear and trembling, he says, I went into that city determined to preach nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Praise God. And out of that wonderful preaching of the Word of God, a new, a new church was born, a church full of the Holy Spirit and power. And so now, as he thinks about that, he comes to that 16th verse, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I think that's his, his way of saying, I am proud of the gospel. I've seen what the gospel could do. It is the power of God unto salvation. Praise God. Uh, we know that word power. It's the Greek word dunamis that we get dynamite from. It's God's dynamite to blast people out of the darkness of the world into the light of the kingdom of God. It's the power of God unto salvation. And of course, we know that word. It's soteria. It comes from the word sozo. It's God's power to bring us into forgiveness. It's God's power to bring us into healing. It's God's power to bring us into deliverance. It's God's power to bring us into fullness and wholeness of life. I am proud of the gospel because it's the power of God unto salvation, praise God, to everyone that believeth. Amen? Amen. Believe the gospel this morning. Believe the gospel. It's so powerful in our lives. Praise the Lord. I want to talk this morning about... What is the gospel? There's a lot of confusion today in the church concerning the gospel. So let me talk about, for just a moment, what the gospel is not. The gospel is not a philosophy of life. The gospel is not a system of ethics. The gospel is not good advice. The gospel is not a legalistic list of do's and don'ts. Sister, if you'll just take that makeup off and drop your hymn line a little bit, God will love you more and hear your prayers. Listen, that's not good news. That's not good news. No. The gospel is not a little sermonette on being a well-rounded person. You can be a well-rounded person by eating too much pie. Is that right? That's not the gospel. No. And now listen to this one now. The gospel is not even anointed teaching on Christian living. We come to church and we hear a wonderful teaching about the Christian home and how the man should be the head of the home and love his wife as Christ loved the church and how the wife should be submissive to her husband and how they should raise up godly children. And we go out of the door and we say, Woo! We really heard the gospel this morning. No, you didn't. You heard a good Bible teaching on the Christian home. Or we come to church and the pastor waxes eloquent concerning our citizenship. And he says our citizenship is in heaven, but in our temporary home, our citizenship is in the United States of America. And as Americans, we should be good citizens. We should uh, obey the laws of the land. We should pray for those who have been placed over us in authority. We should vote, not 
or personalities, but upon principle. Amen? Praise God. And uh, all this about Christian citizenship. And we go out and say, Woo, boy, I tell you, the pastor really preached the gospel today. No, he didn't. You got a good Bible teaching on the subject of Christian citizenship. Oh, we come to church and the pastor preaches so well on prayer, how prayer moves the hand of God. Apart from prayer, God does nothing, and so we need to spend time in His presence. We need, we need to spend time praying, and we think, wow, what a gospel message. No, it was just a good, anointed Bible teaching on prayer. What is the gospel? Look in Romans 1, verses 1 through 4. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel concerning his Son. The gospel always concerns his Son. The gospel concerning his Son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and marked out or designated or declared to be the Son of God in power according to the Spirit of holiness by His resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Praise God. The Gospel concerning His Son. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1, verses 3 through 5, the Apostle talks about His Gospel. He said, Now I would remind you, brethren, what terms I preached to you, the Gospel which you received, in which you stand. And then he lays out his gospel there in verses 3 through 5. As, as he tells us, For I delivered to you as of first importance, first importance, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that He was buried, and on the third day raised from the dead in accordance with the Scriptures. Praise God. That He... He died, He was buried, and He rose again. That's the Gospel, praise God. The Gospel is the preaching of Christ. The Gospel is the proclamation of the redemptive Christ event. The Gospel always centers in the person and the redemptive work of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospel is the preaching of His virtuous life, His vicarious death, his victorious resurrection, and His vital ascension into heaven. That is the Gospel. That's the power of God unto salvation. Now we know that the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, record the historical event of the redemptive Christ event. They, they are the ones who record that Pilate had him scourged with the Roman cat of nine tails, tearing his body to pieces, the Gospels are the ones, are they who record that uh, the nails were driven through his hands, that the crown of thorns was crammed into his brow, that the cross was dropped into the socket, and people, a few that were there, watched him as he died. The Gospels record all of that. Most of you know that I grew up as a Southern Baptist, and I'm very, I'm very thankful for my Baptist background and my Baptist heritage. I was running around with some Baptists the other day, and I said, you know, you guys know I'm not really a Baptist. They said, Brother Jimmy, your Baptist roots show through. <laughs> and I think they do, probably. But you know, when I, when I was a little boy, uh, we had uh, week-long revival meetings, sometimes two weeks. And, and often a, a, a Baptist evangelist would come. And some of these guys were worldwide known preachers. I mean, they were powerful orators, and they would go into great detail preaching about the historical event of the death and resurrection of Jesus. I mean, they, they would go into detail about how that, that whip had uh, pieces of glass embedded into the leather and pieces of lead, and when it struck the back of the prisoner, and it, they, the one doing the whip would jerk down, it would cut deep stripes in the body. Sometimes they weren't too careful about where the whip hit. It would come around the visceral region, tear open the, the visceral region, and even the intestines would begin to fall out. They would talk about how flies would get in the wound uh, of the Savior as He's hanging there on the cross. All of the details, I mean, in great detail and, and in great description, it would make you cry 
to hear them. And yet, though they were very good at preaching the historical event, they had very little revelation concerning the why. They always said, He died so that we could be free from our sins. But that's as far as it went. But I want to, this morning to say to you, the four Gospels record the historical event, but the Epistles give us the spiritual significance of the historical event. The Epistles tell us what happened in the spirit world when Jesus died and rose again. What happened to sin when Jesus died and rose again? What happened to the old man, the flesh, when Jesus died and rose again? What happened to sickness when Jesus died on that cross? What happened to rejection when He died and rose again? What happened to poverty? What happened to the curse? What happened to the devil? All of that is recorded in the epistles. And so, let's look at the gospel now this morning in its fullness, praise God. First of all, the gospel is good news concerning sin. 2 Corinthians 5.21, praise God. <clears throat> For our sake, He, that's God, made Him to be sin, who knew no sin, that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. Praise the Lord. Wow. That's dynamite, isn't it? That is dynamite. As Jesus hung upon that cross, all the sin of the fallen race of Adam, past, present, future, met upon Him that day. I mean, every dirty lie ever told by the human race fell upon Him that day. All blasphemy, all cursing, all taking of the name of the Lord in vain, all of it met on Him that day. Every sin of sexual perversion ever committed by the fallen race of Adam, all adultery, all homosexuality, all of it met on Him that day. The, the, the one who was sinless, the one who lived so, so, so pure, now all the filth of the world comes upon Him that day as He hangs there. And as all of our sin met on Jesus that day, Paul goes so far as to say He became sin. He became everything that was odious in the sight of God. He became everything that God must judge so that I could become everything that God would not have to judge. Amen? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, my sin was judged in the person of my representative as He hung on the cross that day at Calvary. Praise the Lord. Wow. Isaiah 53 says, He was pierced for our transgressions. He was pierced in the head by the thorns. He was pierced in the hands and the feet by the nails. And He was pierced in the side by the spear. He was pierced for our transgressions. I've got good news for you this morning. The sin problem has been dealt with. Amen. It was dealt with. And you now, who have believed the gospel, have become the righteousness of God in Christ. Praise God. That's good news, isn't it? That's good news. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> All right. But the gospel is also good news about the old man or the old sinful nature uh, or the flesh. Praise God. Now, <clears throat> sins are the fruit. The old man is the factory. The root. Would it not be Foolish for God to deal with the fruit and not deal with the root. You know, I, I, have a, I have a neighbor. He has about 10 acres that adjoins the edge of my property. He's a dentist. Uh, he thinks he's a former rancher. What he knows about farming and ranching, you can put in a thimble. <laughs> and he's, he's got this big field of Johnson grass and sunflowers full of Johnson grass and sunflowers. And he hates Johnson grass and sunflowers. He told me, I want to get rid of all of that Johnson grass and all that sunflower, and I'm going to plant this expensive seed, and I'm going to put my full-blooded registered goats in there so they'll have good food. I said, did you know that goats love Johnson grass and sunflowers? No, not my goats. So he's, he's been trying to get rid of that Johnson grass and sunflowers as long as we, almost as long as we've lived there. Uh, he... he uh, he hires the guy to come with a tractor. And he mows down all the Johnson grass and it looks so good. But you know what happens? 
Here it comes right back up. Johnson grass will take the can if you'll let it. I mean, here it comes right back up. And then uh, uh, he'll hire the man to come back. And this time, he's going to disc it all up. Disc everything up. So he's mowed it down. Now he's discing it up. And he just discs those seeds right back into the ground. Turns those, aerates those roots that are already in the ground. And then he will fertilize it and plant his good seeds in there. You know what happens. You never see the good seeds. Here comes the Johnson grass and the sunflower popping back up. And a, a few weeks ago, about three weeks ago, I was trying to burn some ants in my field, which there's a burn ban on, I forgot, and the fire got away from me, and it went under the fence into his Johnson grass. Fortunately, he had cut it just a few weeks before, so it wasn't very high. But he got into his Johnson grass pasture and it burned about a half an acre. The fire department came and had to put out the fire. And uh, I was thinking, well, maybe, my, maybe that burn will help him. Maybe it took care of the Johnson grass. It rained a few days later, and I, I went out there this morning and looked at it. The part that I burned is the best crop of Johnson grass in his whole field. Whoa. Well, you know the, you know the problem. He's dealt with the, this out here. He hadn't dealt with the root, right? And as long as you don't deal, deal with the root, the fruit's going to be bad. Praise God. So, on the cross, Jesus not only took our sins, but He took our sin-loving nature, our old man. Praise God. Look at Romans 6.6. 6. Bill taught on it this morning in Sunday school. Romans 6.6. 6. I'll story it like the King James does. Knowing this, the RSV says, we know this. Knowing this. That's the problem right there. Most Christians don't know this. <laughs> Paul's so optimistic. Knowing this. That our old man, our old self, our old sinful Adamic nature, our old man was crucified with Him. Woo! So that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be slaves to sin. Wow. Our old man was crucified with Him. Was crucified. That's, that's aorist tense in the Greek. It means once for all. Past tense. Forever. 2,000 years ago. Praise the Lord. When Jesus hung on that cross, He not only took our sins, but God saw Adam can't be fixed. All the band-aids in the world and all the mess in the world can't fix Adam. Adam has to die. And so he took our old Adamic, sinful, stubborn, rebellious, selfish self, placed us in Christ and crucified Him on the cross. He not only died for us, He died as us, praise God. Amen. On the cross, praise the Lord. And thank God when He rose from the dead, we came forth New creation beings, amen? A whole new race comes forward who loves the Word and the will and the ways of God. Praise God. Say, that's good preaching, Brother Jimmy. Amen. Praise God. Woo! And that's why the, the, Paul says in Romans 6, 11, Therefore, because your old man died, therefore, reckon yourselves, consider yourselves, believe yourselves, Dead unto sin and alive unto God. Wow. That is such good news this morning. Not only did He take your sins, He took your sin loving nature. That way, we don't have to sin. Now, sometimes we slip up and do, but we don't have to because the old man died with Him. Praise God. Moving along, the gospel is also good news about sickness. Not only did He take my sin and my sin-loving nature, but on that cross, He took all the representative diseases of the world into Himself. Praise God. Look in Matthew chapter 8. And when, Peter entered, and when Jesus entered Peter's house, He saw His mother-in-law lying sick with a fever. He touched her hand. The fever left her, and she rose and served Him. That evening they brought to him many who were possessed with demons. 
He cast out the spirits with word and healed all who were sick. And this was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our infirmities and bore our diseases. Praise God. So many denominations teach and preach that uh, when Isaiah 53, 4 says that He bore our diseases, He bore our sicknesses, He bore our griefs, He bore our calamities, He bore all of that for us. They said, that's talking about spiritual disease. Talking about sin. But Matthew gives us a New Testament commentary on Isaiah 53. And he says, this is what Isaiah was talking about. When, when Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law, it says the fever left her. She didn't have a spiritual fever. It was a real fever caused by germs and disease. And so, he says, that's, that's, that's what Matt, Isaiah was talking about. Jesus took our diseases upon Himself. He bore our diseases. So as He hangs upon that cross, now full of sin, and full of the old man, all the representative diseases of the world come upon Him. How many, how many of you know that disease came into the world on the coattail of sin? It rode right into this world on sin's coattail. And now He hangs there and all the diseases of the world come upon Him. As He hangs there gasping for breath, trying to push up on those, thorn on those nails to get a breath, He's taking the respiratory diseases of the world into His lungs. As He hangs there and flies begin to get into the wounds on His body causing infection, He's taking all the skin diseases of the world upon Him. Himself. All of the diseases of mankind are meeting on Him that day on Calvary. Full of sin. Full of the old man. Full of sickness. Wow. I got good news this morning. If Jesus took our sicknesses, you don't have to have them. Amen. He took them. Amen. He took them. We don't have to have them. We don't have to put up with them. We don't have to suffer with sickness and disease because Jesus took them, praise God. Well, moving on, the Gospel is also good news about rejection. Isaiah 53.3 says, He was despised and rejected by men. That's probably enough right there. John 1 Verse 11 and 12 says, He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. He came to the Jewish people, and they rejected Him. If you look at the life of Jesus, His whole life is the story of rejection. He came into this world, and the world rejected Him. His nation rejected Him. The church of His day and the leaders of that church rejected Him. He felt Himself rejected by His own family when they did not understand Him and thought He had become a religious madman. He was ultimately rejected by His disciples. And as He hung upon the cross, the ultimate rejection, as sin now has broken His relationship with the Father, and He cries out, My God, my God, why have You rejected Me? All the rejection of the world meeting upon Him that day. That means all the rejection that a little baby in his mother's womb feels when he knows he's unwanted. That he's going to be just another mouth that has to be fed. Or I don't have a husband, and yet this baby is growing on the inside of me. That, that, little, that little one in there feels and picks up that rejection. All the rejection <clears throat> that a child feels when he comes into the world, and he's not wanted in this family. Maybe they wanted a boy, and it's a girl. And it feels that rejection coming from his parents. All the rejection the child feels when he goes off to school. And he's a little different from the other children. He's a little overweight or he wears glasses and so he's fatty or four eyes. All of that rejection is programmed into that child. All the rejection that a young woman feels, when, that a woman feels when a husband rejects her for a younger woman. All that rejection, Jesus took it that day on Calvary. Got good news this morning. You don't have to feel unloved and unwanted. You don't have to have the idea that I'm just a I'm a loser. I've got good news for you. Praise God that you were accepted in the beloved. You're not rejected. 
You are accepted in the Beloved. And you have become now a highly favored son or daughter of the King. And you've been raised to the throne level of the universe, seated in Christ next to your daddy. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Any of you that feel unloved, unwanted, rejected, we're going to have a time of ministry here at the close, and we'd just love to pray for you and break, the, break that thing off of you so that you can begin to understand that I am highly favored and loved by my God and by other people. Praise God. But the, the gospel is not only good news about sin and the old sin nature and sickness and rejection, but the, go the gospel is good news about poverty. 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though He was rich, yet for your sake He became poor, so that by His poverty you might become rich. Praise God. He was rich, right? I mean, I mean, his daddy owns the universe, amen? That's a, that's a rich man, praise God. He was rich, but what did he do? He laid it all down. He laid down all that glory. All the glory they had in the beginning with the Father. All of it, he laid it down. And the Bible says he became poor. He took on a human body and came into a world filled with sin and sickness and poverty. He became poor. Now, you, you, you think about it. When Jesus hung upon the cross, He was hungry. He hadn't eaten for 24 hours. He was thirsty. That was one of the cries that came out of His, his mouth. I thirst. He was naked. Don't let any religious pictures deceive you. He hung there before the whole world with no clothing on. And He was destitute of all things. He owned nothing. The only thing He owned was His robe and the soldiers were now gambling for His robe at the foot of the cross. You know, you can't get any more poor than that. Hungry, thirsty, naked, and destitute of all things. But on the cross, He, he exhausted the poverty curse, praise God. I mean, He took all that poverty on Himself. He exhausted the poverty curse so that in exchange, we could live in the abundance of God Almighty. Amen? I tell you, anytime you hear somebody preaching about Poverty being a blessing, it ain't true. You go to these third world countries and you look in at what, what's happening there and you'll know, no, that's not a blessing. That is not a blessing. It's a curse. But Jesus, who was rich, became poor so that we, in exchange, could live in the abundance of God Almighty. Praise the Lord. Okay. But the Gospel is also good news about the curse. Look in Galatians chapter 3. For all who rely on works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. And then in verse 13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, as it is written, Cursed be everyone who hangs on a tree, that in Christ Jesus the blessings of Abraham might, become, might come upon the Gentiles, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, the Bible is very, very plain. If you put yourself under the law, if you put yourself under rules, you're putting yourself under a curse. You say, well, why? Because you can't keep it. It says, if you, if you break the law in one part, one part, you come under the curse of the broken law. And on the cross, Jesus took the curse of the broken law. And, and, and the writer quotes the book of Deuteronomy, Cursed be everyone who hangs on a tree. He takes the curse of the broken law upon Himself and hangs there upon Calvary's tree. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, when we talk about the law, we're talking about the universal moral law and the written law. He took the curse of that so that we could live in the blessings of Abraham. Amen? You study this Bible. Abraham was blessed, wasn't he? Abraham wasn't poor. Abraham was blessed. He walked in God's abundance. And Jesus took the curse of the broken law so that in exchange, we could live 
in the blessings of Abraham. What kind of a crown did they, did they press upon his brow? Crown of thorns. Notice it was not a crown, of di a diadem of gold and silver and diamonds and jewels. It was a crown of thorns. Thorns in Genesis 3 are connected with the curse. The curse that came when Adam sinned. It says the ground will not be productive like it has been, but a man will have to quit hard to bring forth crops out of the earth. But cursed is the ground with thorns and thistles. So thorns are connected with the curse. So they put a crown of thorns on him because he had taken the curse. Praise God. And then, last of all, the gospel is good news about the devil. Hallelujah. Second <laughs> Corinthians, I mean, second, I mean, Colossians two fifteen. We we preached on this recently. It says he disarmed the principalities and powers and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in the cross. He disarmed principalities and powers. Uh, the King James says he spoiled principalities and powers. And a, a few weeks ago, I preached about that and said that word disarmed or spoiled is the Greek word for, means to peel. For, for peeling the hide off of an animal. How many of you here have ever skinned a deer? Quite a few of us have skinned a deer. Well, on the cross, Jesus peeled the devil's hide. Amen. He took his guns away from him. He took his authority away from him and gave it back to mankind, back to the church. Amen. That's good news. Put him under our feet. So if the devil's on your back today, get him off, get him under your feet. That's where he belongs. Amen? That's where he belongs. I'll tell you, this gospel is good news, isn't it? Oh, it's good news. Praise God. No wonder the apostle says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's good news. It's good news about sin. It's good news about the old Adamic nature. It's good news about sickness. It's good news about rejection. It's good news about poverty. It's good news about the curse. And it's good news about the devil that he's defeated. Hallelujah. Woo. Praise God. Well, some people talk about the full gospel. I think the gospel is pretty full. Amen. It's full to the brim. Amen? Amen? It's full to the brim. Sherry, far beyond what you heard for 40 years, he died to take away your sins. He did. But all so much more, so much more in the gospel. Praise God. Well, thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. As, as the band just begins to quietly worship the Lord, let's listen to the Holy Spirit before we go. particularly want to pray this morning for people here and who are watching online about this thing of rejection that he took all the rejection of the world there may be some of you here that grew up in a home where there was not approval always rejection never could do anything good enough your grades were never good enough your behavior was never good enough and there was always that feeling of rejection I'm not good enough to please my parents. We want to pray for you this morning. We want to break that thing off of you so that you can begin to experience God's acceptance because of what Jesus did for you. Maybe some who are struggling with finances, struggling with this thing of poverty. Good news this morning, Jesus broke the poverty curse. He exhausted the poverty curse as He hung there on the cross, destitute of all things. Therefore, God wants you to prosper. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be able to give tithes and offerings. He wants you to have enough for yourself and enough to bless others with. Amen. That's, that's His will for you. So we want to pray for you this morning. Praise the Lord. And any of you say, Brother Jimmy, the devil's really been on my case. Let's get him off your case. Amen. And under your feet.
this morning. Praise the Lord. Brother Jerry, you come on up here, and we're gonna, and I'll stand here with you. And we, 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 we want to pray for you this morning. This is your opportunity to respond to the preaching of the gospel, which is good news. Amen. Let's go. Our God is mighty to save. Hallelujah. prayer just come on quickly we'll pray for you he took our infirmities he took our diseases he took our sins he took that old nature he took the poverty broke the curse all of that for us amen and you need prayer then come quickly we'll pray for you something right here that I wanted to do during the ministry time, but I feel like there wasn't time, but we do. Samuel, will you stand up back here at the back? Just stand up. Many of you don't know Samuel. He's new here. And somehow, God just put him in Jerry's heart and put him in my heart. Just Sometimes that happens, right, Jerry? Amen. And Samuel, I believe the, words, the, the Lord has a word for you. And, he, and He's saying to you that you're going to become a son of the house. Like little Samuel of old, who, who lived there in the tabernacle and learned the voice of the Lord as he worked with Samuel the, pro the prophet. God is saying to you that you're going to learn how to hear God in this house. You're going to learn how to hear the voice of the Lord. You're going to learn the Word of God under the preaching and the teaching of the Bible in this house. And you're going to become like a Samuel who can hear God, praise God, and, and even be able to encourage others because of what he's speaking unto you. And you're going to become like a Timothy in this house. You're going to be trained in this house for the things of the ministry of God. So God just wants to say to you, you are a son of the house. And learn. Open up your heart. Learn, learn, learn how to hear God. Learn the Word of God. Learn how to minister in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I bear witness with that, man. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. Wow. All right, Brother Jerry. I don't know how y'all are feeling right now, but I feel like that's the most rounded, thorough, full gospel message I ever heard. All in crammed into one message. Amen. Amen. It blessed me coming and going, in case you didn't figure that out. But uh, anyway, we're going to uh, have covered dish today. And... Uh, we, they're asking in the kitchen that you go in through this door and then come around and find your place to sit. Brenda, do we have a table for uh, the pastors to sit at and people? Okay, the very back table is for the pastors to sit at. And if, if you're a visitor, for certain and sure, we want you to come sit at that table so we get to know you better. And if it doesn't fill up with visitors, which I don't think we had very many today, if you haven't been here very long and you haven't had an opportunity to, to get to know the pastors a little bit one-on-one, -on -one, come sit at that table, okay? And we'll welcome you and we'll fellowship with you. We want to get to know you too. That's the purpose of it. 
So, uh, and also the kitchen asked me to announce that a couple of people that were going to help didn't get to come because uh, someone was worried about the COVID stuff. But uh, anyway, if any of you can stay after we finish eating and help clean up the kitchen and put stuff away, it would be greatly appreciated because they do a lot of work and it, and it takes a lot of help, okay? So if you're able-bodied and, and uh, want to serve, there's a good place to serve right now. So how many of you are glad you came to church today? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's going to get better and better and better and better. And you folks that are streaming and sitting by your television, I know that you enjoyed it today, and we're going to pray for you, and we're going to hope that God blesses you and, uh, and, and fills you with his, his love today. Amen. Just because of this message that you heard. So, uh, and we still invite you to come and, and share with us in person whenever you get ready and whenever you'd like to. So it's been a great day, and I'm going to close it in prayer and bless the food. And uh, just so you'll know, uh, the pastors go first to eat, you know, through the, through the line. And the reason for that is so we can be at the table when the, when the people come to sit there, okay? So we're not being greedy or, or well, maybe a little bit, but... But anyway, uh, that's our, our, our good, good thing for the day. We get to go first. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, let's pray. Father, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for this message. I thank you for what you're doing in our body and in our midst, Father. And I love you, and, and we all love you, and we want to get to know you better and better and better, Father, because the more we know about you, the more we can love you and, and bless you and, and serve you, Father. So, Lord, just uh, hide these words from today in our heart and let us meditate on them day and night and let them become a part of our being, Father, of our spirit and our soul. And, and Father, let us call it to our memory, Holy Spirit, when we, when we needed to hear it. So we thank you for the day, and we just ask you to bless the food, nourish our bodies, and give us a great fellowship, and keep everybody healthy and well and strong, Father. And bring us back next Wednesday for a great service, and just keep us going, Father. Guide us and direct us in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How do you know you've been to Cowboy Church? I, I, I'm getting bad about that. You have to remind me all the time. How do you know when you've been to a cowboy church? Y'all come back now, you hear? All right, hit it, boys. And I mean soon. Oh